Hey, my friends, you've heard me talking about Ted, RadioMemories.com, and how he produces all these amazing classic radio shows and does great restoration work on them. I want you to hear just one of these shows. This is an episode of Blum and Abner from March 18th, 1938. This is the copy of the show that I had in my own library. Listen. Well, the oil boom in Pine Ridge seems to be over. And Squire Skimp learned the authorities were investigating him for selling stock in a company without a permit from the state. He refunded all the money invested by the citizens of the town and announced that he was discontinuing the project. Lum and Abner have finished taking the first picture for the Pine Ridge Motion Picture Company and are now waiting for the film to be developed. Okay, now I'm going to let you hear a fully restored episode that Ted sent me from RadioMemories.com. Listen to this. Well, the oil boom in Pine Ridge seems to be over. When Squire Skimp learned the authorities were investigating him for selling stock in a company without a permit from the state, he refunded all the money invested by the citizens of the town and announced that he was discontinuing the project. Lum and Abner have finished taking the first picture for the Pine Ridge Motion Picture Company and are now waiting for the film to be developed. As we look in on the little community today, we find our old friends over at their Jotham Down store. Lum is talking. Listen. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff we're out of, Abner. I've just been so busy with this moving picture business, I sort of neglected the store here. Yeah, I know. There's a whole list of stuff we're needing. Hmm? Mamie Seastrunk was in here a while ago wanting some stuff. Weren't but two articles out of the whole bunch that we had. Well, we sure can't sell it unless we got it here, can we? No, no, you can't. Hi, uh, Grannies, looks like we try every way in the world to make money and wind up right back here in the store. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just a good thing we got the store to come back to. Yes, sir. If we'd have took the money we've made out of this store and put it back in this business, we'd have been a heap better off, you know. Oh, what? my, yes, and I'm glad to hear you say that, Lom. Just looks like every time we get a little money ahead, why... Something comes up, one of these get-rich-quick schemes, and we lose it and have to start all over again. Well, from now on, we'll just make it a rule to stick to the jot -em down store. Well, that's a good idea. Make some improvements in it. Yes, sir. We lost a little money in that moving picture business, but the best thing to do is just take our loss and forget about it. Of course, we might invest some more and get one of them talking cameras and get our money back, but... Well, that'd be just like sending good money after bad. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we ought to think, uh, or, or, huh? Huh, what? Huh, huh, what did you say about sending something after money? Oh, <laughs> that's just old Edward saying of mine. I said they no use to send good money after bad. Oh, bad what? Bad money. I thought you said good money. I said they ain't no use to send good money after bad money. You mean counterfeits? No. Bad money. Money that, uh, well, money that's already practical lost. Uh, well, uh, wait a minute. Now, come over that again, Lama. I don't believe I'm following you. I don't believe you are neither. See, we bought a Camry from that company in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah, we got stung. The Camry won't take nothing but silent pictures. Yeah. Er, uh, no. All right. There ain't no use to send them good money to buy another Camry with. Well, weren't that good money we sent them before? Of course it was. I thought you said it was bad. Well, it is now. That's the bad money I'm talking about. Are they claiming his county fit? No, Abner, no. Well, what are they saying it's bad for then? They never said it was. I did. Oh, well, as long as they ain't complaining about it, why, well, I just wouldn't even mention it to them. Maybe they won't notice it and go ahead and spend it and... Well, for long, it'll get scattered around amongst the many folks, Lama. They never could trace it back well, to us. Well, it's good money, all right. Well, you just got done saying it was bad. It's good for them, but bad for us. Well, don't they use the same kind of money out there in California as we do? Of course they do. What I mean is, well, when I say bad money, I mean... Well, supposing you bought a horse for $25 and then you found out he was bulky and blind and sway back and was about 24 year old and had splints and spavins all over him, what would you do? I dog it, I'd give him a good swap and that's what I'd do. Well, how are you going to swap a horse like that off? Well, in the first place, I believe I'd take some hay and fill up that sway back and then I'd put a saddle and blanket on him to where they couldn't see it. And I'd file his teeth down to where they couldn't tell how old he was. 
Put him in a dark stall to where they couldn't see him good. Well, do you think you could get your $25 back, though? 25 Why, I wouldn't take a nickel less than 50 for him. That horse is a genuine thoroughbred long, gentle as a kitten, while Elizabeth just thinks the world and all of him, just a regular pet around the house. What horse are you talking about? Why, the horse at the... Uh, huh, that's right, ain't it? Well, you ain't got no horse. Of course not. <laughs> I had me worried there for a minute. <laughs> Sort of like having a bad dream, waking up and finding it ain't so. Well, what I'm Eesh. talking about, trying to explain to you, if you paid $25 for that horse and seen you got skinned, you wouldn't put a $100 saddle on him to try to get your money back, would you? Why, of course not, of course not. That's what I'm talking about. No use sending good money after bad. The $25 uh, would be bad money and the $100 would be good money. Oh, well, I never got such a skin in then. That $25 I give them was bad money. <laughs> I wondered how they ever panned a critter like that off on me for $25. For goodness sake, you still don't understand it. Huh? You can be the thick headed if somebody. I... Wait a minute. Yonder comes Grand Happy Spears. Now, supposing he comes in here and tells you where you can invest $10 and make a fortune out of it. Where? I don't know, but supposing you lose the $10, and then he tells you if you put up 20 more, you can get the 10 back. Uh-huh. That's sending good money after bad. I, I lose the 22, huh? Or the 22. Or, <laughs> dog it, I can't say it without it sounding like $2. Just, uh, two is what I mean. By that. Well, you're taking a chance on losing 20 more to get back the 10. That wouldn't be a good deal. Why, of course not. No, sir, if he thinks he's going to talk me into taking the interest in something like that, he's crazy. Well, come in, him. Grandpa. Him. Don't come around here trying to sell us none of that stuff, Grandpa. What's the matter, Abner? I just wouldn't be interested. If it's such a good invest, what are you going around trying to peddle it for? Keep it for yourself if it's that good. What in the world are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Don't stand there blinking them eyes at me that way. I'm don't, on to you. Don't pay no attention to him, Grandpa. Old skin flame. I can't understand what he's talking about. Huh. He can't neither. Act's a little touched if you don't mind notions on it. He ought to be bored for the simples. Well, I got more sense than to put any money in that kind of a deal. I'll well, tell you that. Well, just forget about that deal, Abner. Skin Ain't nobody me. trying to sell you nothing. Mm-hmm. Sit down, Grandpa. Sit down. What's new? Here. Oh, not, not much of nothing, Lum. Sort of quiet around town now that the oil well scares blowed over. Huh? Yeah, what'd you do about Squire Skimp? Did you sort them papers on him? No, by the time I got to see him, he done give everybody their money back for the stock he sold them. Never had no evidence against him, so I called the sheriff in there at the county seat, and he told me just to forget about it. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear he never got in no trouble over it. And you better watch yourself, too, Grandpappy Spears. On that stuff you're selling, whatever it is, you'll be in the same fix. Well, I still don't know what you're talking about, Ed. Yes, you do, too. Well, you come out all right on that oil well. They left that derrick there in your yard. That lumber's worth something. Oh, yeah, sure, on that deal. Yeah, I ain't complaining about that, no. (laughs) That's all right. I got uh, Cedric's over there. Helping Elizabeth tear it down and bust it up into cookwood. Her and Pearl swinging the axe, and Cedric's over there helping them. She couldn't climb around on that thing. She gets sort of dizzy headed for some reason whenever she gets up high that way. <laughs> well, uh, gets dizzy headed down low some at times. That's going to leave an awful hole there in your yard, ain't it, Abner, where they start to drill the well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cedric and Elizabeth's going to fill it up, though, smooth it out there and plant the grass back. <laughs> going to have to haul some rocks and chunk in there, too, I reckon, to keep the ground from settling. <laughs> It'd have been funny if it had uh, sure enough struck oil in your yard there, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, Elizabeth's glad they never. She's afeard they's going to spile a drinking water there with it. Oh, well, that was just a stock-selling scheme anyway. Have you got your moving pictures back yet, Lum? No, we had to send the film to Fort Smith to have it developed, Grand Bab. I no reckon we'll get it back for the first of the week. Well, sir, I'm curious to see how it comes out. Well, I'm just glad it's over. I know that. Me and Abner was just talking. Maybe we can spend a little time in our store here now and get some things dead. Well, they must have got through already. Look at there. Huh? There comes Cedric. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you get that? The Derrick's all tore down, Cedric? Uh, yes, Mom. Well. We're all done with it. Well, good. Yeah, come in, Cedric. 
Yeah, howdy, Cedric. Uh, how much time did you put in, Cedric? I want to figure out how much the old yen pay you here. Oh, uh, four hours. Four, huh? Yes, Mom, here. Done got it figured up. Sixty cents is what you owe me, I think. Uh, well, uh, do you want the cash or do you want to take it out in the store and trade, Cedric? Well, I believe I'd rather have the cash, Mr. Abner, if you don't mind. Oh, no. What's no, that you got no. in your hand, Cedric? Mom, oh, uh, just something I found in that dirt that come out of that hole over there in Mr. Abner's yard. Well, uh, let's see, Cedric. Hmm. <laughs> it's the curiousest looking thing I've ever seen. Well, I do know. Yeah, what is it? I don't know. Looks like some sort of a uh, granite. I don't know what it is. Say, this was dug out of the ground, Cedric? Yes, Mom, I think there's some more in there, too. It looks sort of like a piece of old bone or ivory or something, don't it? Hey, Granny, as men, you know what that might be? Huh? That hill your house sets on there, Abner, might be a burying place for some of them prehistoric animals I've been reading about. Them what? Dinosaurs and such as that. That stuff might be a worth a fortune. It might. Why, of course. Hi, right, grannies, we'll get some picks and shovels and dig a bigger hole over there. Yeah, that's the thing to do, man. It's Ain't no way. telling what we'll find well, down no, in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> this might be better than a while well after all. Well, it looks as though any improvements in the Jotham Down store will have to wait. When days are raw and cold, you know your child should have a hot drink with his meals. But you have to be careful in choosing the right kind of a hot drink. You know that growing children should never drink coffee because of the effect coffee has on their nerves, their digestion, and their sleep. And you know that many other hot drinks are too rich and sweet. They may take away a child's appetite for solid foods he should have. It's a problem, all right, but many wise mothers solve it by giving the children hot postum made with milk, as wholesome and nourishing a beverage as any child could have. Postum contains no caffeine or other stimulant to upset little systems. It is simply whole wheat and bran, skillfully roasted and slightly sweetened. It will not spoil a child's appetite, yet it provides a warm, steaming mealtime drink with a delicious, tempting flavor that all children love. They like its mellow, golden-brown color and its grown-up look. Get Postum tomorrow. Serve the children Postum made with milk, piping hot and steaming in the cup. They'll love it. And it's a wonderful way to fortify them against the cold. Lum and Abner at this same time every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. See you Monday then. Good evening. Lou Crosby speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. So there you go. That episode of Blum and Abner was originally broadcast back in 1938. Uh, and as you heard, a lot of the shows we had uh, from our old collections were not good. Uh, March 18th, 1938 is that episode uh, that he did. He's not only working on that, he's working on Roy Rogers. He has a bunch of those shows. He also has a number of uh, shows of suspense that he's upgrading. Some of these shows are uh, are horrible in quality, and we don't air them. He's working on Vic and Sade, a restoration of the Mercury Theater with Orson Welles. And uh, let's see here, what else is he working on? Arthur Godfrey time and the Arthur Gall- Gar- Godfrey talent scout shows. A lot of those have been lost. Inner Sanctum upgrades there, along with Lux Radio Theater. Those we can't air because... They run a full hour. We can't cut them down to fit. Screen Directors Playhouse, we air a number of those. Uh, We mentioned Lum and Abner. We love them as well. He's working on restorations of Let George Do It. College Quiz Bowl from uh, starring uh, Alan Ludden. Uh, That's why I didn't know Alan did radio. Well, I'm sure he had to. Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, both the uh, hour and half hour shows 
Also, uh, let's see, the other ones he's working on, CBS Mystery Theater, which are shows that we don't air here because they are too new and still under full copyright. And he's working on a full restoration of Superman. So there we go. He's working on lots of projects. Uh, and, and contact him at radiomemories.com. That's radiomemories.com. All his contact information is there. We also have his information up at our webpage, which is classicradio.stream. Uh, yeah, this is an infomercial for Ted. I'm going to tell you if anybody deserves it, he does, because he did some wonderful work in restoring all these great old-time shows. Uh, radiomemories.com. All righty, that's going to do it. I just wanted to let you hear some of these upgrades because you hear me raving about Ted, and yet you don't know what he's doing. You got this. Classicradio.stream is my webpage. Ted's webpage is radiomemories.com. Come visit us both, and we'll see you next time.